Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Garage. Uh, today I want to give you a rundown on how I installed a 4L80E in a, into a 1971 Chevy C20 pickup. Now this should also apply to your uh, 67 72C10s. Um, as you can see there, I have a low hump transmission tunnel and the 4L80E fits in there just pretty good, right? And it's close, but it fits. And now uh, with a C10, they have a a shorter frame rail so I don't know if that's going to be the same but probably that's what guys on the internet have said it also clears your uh, cooling lines now you'll notice that uh, those are threaded uh, 5 16 this transmission is actually an, a 2001 model out of a, a Chevy Express van that had a 5.7 uh, L31 which is the old school small block Chevy and uh, around 1996 or 7, they, they changed those screw-in fittings into a 3-8 slip fit coupling. Um, you probably just want to get rid of those and, and go back to this uh, old style 5 16 threaded um, flare fitting. Uh, it's a little bit of a trick finding you know, this one right here in the back. This is the one that's the, I believe that's the long one. And be sure you use the... There's like a short one and a long one. You, want, you don't want to screw that up because uh, it needs that long length to properly oil the, uh, the rear planetary. Um, but this fitting here, depending on where you get it, it's, it's really screwed up. So the first one I got uh, snapped off because it was really poorly designed. And the second one I got was thicker in that section, uh, but it had Teflon tape. And well, just take that Teflon tape, throw it in the trash, put an O-ring on there and you won't have any problems with it leaking. Uh, as far as the lines, I use copper nickel, and uh, this is approved by SAE for use in automotive braking and, and you know lines like this. It's uh, also called NICOP. It's easy to form. It's fairly uh, strong and fatigue resistant. Uh, easy, easy to route. Uh, gets rid of any of those hose splices because hose splices suck guys they really suck and i don't want any problems and that's why i've gone with this notice i got these bands on here that keeps it together it keeps it from rattling uh helps keep it from fatiguing got some up front there too um as far as the uh, 4l80 like i said this is a later model one and it has the standard the, between the ls motor and the old school small block chevy those holes there and the, the dowel pin those are the same on both sides where they start getting different is up here at the top. You know, the small block Chevy had that one right there, and then one on the other side matches. And the LS has one of those, and then it has an extra one at the top. Well, I've got a, uh, I've got a crate motor, so I've got the extra one at the top, too, so I have all of them. Now, uh, like I said, the 4L80 uh, early ones will have just the old school pattern, but the later model 4L80s will have both patterns on there. So you're not going to have any problems, guys, no matter what you're putting it in. Um, now you're going to use the uh, larger flex plate. Uh, the small one's 153 tooth. Uh, you're going to need to use the larger one. I think it's 161 or something. I don't. Know. I don't remember. Anyways, it's a it's a big bolt pattern for this torque converter, right? Now the 4L80 is different than uh, the other the 4L60 that fits the LS motors. They continue to use the old uh, offset between the crankshaft and the torque converter that was associated with the Turbo 400, even on the 6 liter LS motor. Uh, it actually had, the LS 6 liter had a thicker crankshaft snout. So you don't have to run any special spacers or anything. You just bolt it up, man. Just use a regular, a typical uh, flex plate there for a tur Turbo 400, man. You're, you're golden. Uh, piece of cake, right? That just bolted right on, no problem. The other thing that was pretty amazing about this this swap was uh, I didn't have to do anything crazy with my cross member. I just I just moved it back to the very last set of holes in the frame. You know, there's there's some holes up. Can you see that? You know, they've got a series of ho holes here, and I think these are the ones that they use for the uh, Turbo 400. And uh, you just move it back there, bolt it in. Now here's where I did have to drill one hole. See, so I've got a single stud uh, cross member mount, and I just put a hole right between the two that were already in there. And this is a special uh, cross member. I mean, it's a factory cross, mem or a cross member mount from something. I, I'll try to figure out what that was and put it in the description, but it's offset. These holes relative to the one in the bottom down here, it's offset about a half inch, all right? And that's what you need, and it just bolts right in, guys. Piece of cake. Uh, I shortened this drive shaft. Um, up to my carrier bearing. I think I gave them the distance from the, the carrier bearing to the end of my 
my tail shaft or my uh, tail shaft of the house, uh, the transmission, and uh, they shortened that up for me, and it was no problem. Uh, one thing to, to consider, guys, is I know a lot of you guys want to try to get, run a uh, one-piece drive shaft in these, but uh, with this long bed, three-quarter ton, if you're still going to use it as a truck and it's not lowered, uh, when you go to full droop on your suspension, you know, when it's up hanging off the shocks, and if you're using standard length shocks, it's the trans the the drive shaft most likely is going to hit right here on this, and uh, that's a problem. So I, I kept the two-piece drive shaft. Uh, some guys will come in here and cut this, but you really don't want to cut that because you see all the push on your truck is coming through these these joints right here. That's what pushes your truck forward. And if you cut it right here, this whole thing's going to get real flippity floppity, and uh, that's that's really not a good idea, guys. Don't be cutting that. That's where all the forces from your drive drive pushing forward go and off that's also what lifts your truck like if with uh from the torque from your axle it goes up through there so you got a lot of stress right here this is an important piece don't go cutting that up all right what else do we do well i'm going to show you the uh the shift link uh, go ahead and use your original factory uh, linkage and all you got to do is you take this piece right here anyway i sectioned it took about three quarter inch out of the middle here and then welded it back together. This is a hardened piece, so you're gonna have to take and uh, do that with uh, a die grinder, cut off wheel, and uh, hardened means high carbon, so you'll probably wanna heat it up a little bit, put a weld on there, and then make sure it's uh, ground nice so you don't have any, uh, oh, is that better? Any problems with it cracking later, all right? But that's the factory piece I just Made it a little bit narrow because the 4L80 is much wider than what was in here. And, then, and this being a 71 was a turbo 350. Now this is the original bracket as well. And uh, I just moved it back on the frame. You can see where it used to be was right there. You see the mark off. There's a hole right there. That's the new hole. I had to drill this one. Uh, uh, where's the other hole? There, that is where the old one was. And uh, I'm... This hole, well, wait, yeah, maybe I drilled this one, and this one was already in the frame. I don't know, one of these was in the frame, and so I used that hole, and I had to drill this one, I think. But pretty easy stuff, man. You just moved it back, and that works out nice, right? The other thing I had to do was this is this rod that goes up to the column uh, lever, the shift lever. Uh, I had to put a little more bend in it right here because the, the, the this location for the shift uh, um, pivot is in a different spot than it used to be, right? It's, it's moved back this way. So I had to bend this further back. And at the same time, I had to extend it up there at the top, way up there. The way I did that was I just cut it at an angle. It's called the scarf joint, right? And that gives you plenty of weld area and a lot better than a butt weld. And I welded on the end of a very long 3 8 bolt. And obviously, I cut the threads off. It was just the shank part and extended that up there at the top. Um, that's pretty much all you got to do to get this thing in there. Pretty easy, really. Let's go out here and see what it looks like under the hood. Um, as far as the uh, what I've done up under here was the thing on the bottom there, you see there's a cable on the bottom down here. This is your uh, throttle position sensor, and I'm using the EZ TCU TCI uh, throttle position sensor. Uh, it's got a little ferrule here, or whatever you call this thing. A little bronze looking thing with screw. You can adjust that uh, to set the uh, tension on your uh, throttle position sensor. And there's also a little bit right there in that uh, uh, where it connects to that bracket. Now, that bracket is a factory kick down bracket that I just modified a little bit to make it work. Let's see if I can get a better, better look at that. I don't know, can you see that? Anyway, that's just the factory bracket. Uh, I'm not sure if it's from this truck or some other car, but it's a factory bracket. And I like to use factory stuff because it works. Now, the other thing you'll see is right there on the wall, that guy right there. That's a module that sends the uh, RPMs to the computer, tells you how fast you're going. And see, it's got a white wire and a yellow wire going into it, and a white wire coming out. That basically uh, conditions the signal out of the HEI so it, you don't have extreme voltage and spikes and that sort of thing. I don't know, there's probably some capacitors and inductors and resistors. Well, I don't know what all is in there, but uh, that's what it does, guys, and that's why I mounted it. Works nice right there. Um, 
I'm feeding all those wires into the cab. I don't have anything out here. Uh, let's go back underneath so you can see where I fed it in it. And the reason why I did that is I, I don't want that easy TCU getting hot because it is one sensitive dude, man. I know because at first I didn't have it in the cab. All right, you can see right up there, there's, there's, there's the top of the engine. There's the wires going down. Wires to the back. There's only one wire going back there, guys. Be careful with that one because you can get it 180 degrees out. I don't know why they did that, but you can. And uh, I don't know, it's like a one and three quarter or something hole with a grommet. Just big enough to fit that big connector uh, in that goes on the back of the transmission back here. This guy. That's a pretty good size. And that wouldn't go in either way, guys. Be careful with that one. And uh, it's supposed to point towards the back of the transmission for some odd reason, but that's where it, where it goes. And you got to be able to fit that through that uh, hole there. And what else? Um, oh, yeah, my throttle position sensor. It's just a cable that goes actually to the sensor that's in the cab, right to that same hole. All right, so let's go up top. All right, so... We come in right about here, and then that throttle position sensor goes back to about here. It's just sitting in there in a, 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 a line up to the uh, engine, right? No problem. And then the uh, all the wires to the computer go underneath the carpet, and then they pop up underneath there, and then, I don't know, you can't really see it, but trust me, it's back there. That's where it lives, and that works really nice. And uh, as far as your shifter, you're like, how's that gonna work out? It's four speed, and you got a three speed indicator well you adjust it so that park is in park reverse neutral overdrive three two and you could almost get one there's one yeah works out just nice and uh it's all factory gm stuff so be reliable i've got about ten thousand miles on this it works nice at uh 75 miles an hour i'm turning about 2350 rpm of course uh, i've got 410 gears but to offset those, I got pretty giant tires on here. These are 235, 85, 16s, which makes them about 31.7 tall. So works out pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, some of you guys might say, well, how about the gear vendors overdrive? And I don't like that thing. It's got a very small sump on it and they want you to change the oil in that thing about every three or 5,000 miles. I don't know, go read the instructions, but uh, it sure ain't 100,000 miles. It's not a real trans. It's just an add-on, guys. So it's not going to be as good as a real transmission designed by GM. And so you want the 4L80. It goes in really easy, guys. It's going to make that old truck scream on down the road and get you better gas mileage, make it more usable and enjoyable. Well, those are the cliff notes on how to install a 4L80 into your C10, C20 pickup. I uh, hope this will help some of you guys out, and we will talk to you later.